Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at some Waterman pens today. And um, what I have lined up for you today is a series of four pens. Uh, two of them are made by Waterman's. Uh, one of them, this one, is, uh, is a die uh, molding from Waterman's but uh, with a different branding. You'll see. And this last one is an unmarked pen. However, I think it might come have come from the Waterman line, nevertheless. So without further ado, let's get started. So this first pen is a Waterman 52. And this is a Red Ripple pen. This is a, uh, this is a throwback pen. This was made around uh, the mid-1920s. And... Uh, they wanted to bring back some designs uh, that were some older designs from the uh, older pens from the 19, uh, like before the 1910, 19-teens, because uh, a lot of the pens looked like this. This is also another Waterman 52. So this pen uh, has some pretty nice features on it. Uh, if you haven't seen a Waterman 52 before, let me zoom in a little bit so we can uh, look at some deep detail. So let's start at the top of the cap. There's really not much there. It's just uh, nothing. The cap itself, the clip. Uh, this clip is the latest uh, version of the the cap, the clip. There's, uh, I think there's three different types of clips. Uh, I'll show you a, uh, a picture of it right above right here, but you'll see um, that Waterman produced four different types of clips in this this lineup. And this one is the latest. I think this was from 1930, if I'm not mistaken. So anyhow, it says Waterman's on there, ideal, and it's got two rivets on there. Uh, this is what actually holds the clip right there on the cap. And uh, it's actually a little bit loose. I haven't, um, I haven't really gotten around to repairing it. And uh, well, I mean, I, I have no experience repairing uh, early clips, so I'm not gonna even bother. It's got a gold band here. Uh, some of them have bigger gold bands, but uh, this one's been used quite a bit. I can uh, show you that. You can see there's some brassing on there. Uh, we move our way down. Here's the lever. Right here, it's a nice, high-quality Waterman's Ideal lever. You'll see on a lot of the Waterman pens. And uh, if you can see, there you go. It, very faintly, it says Waterman's. Uh, fountain pen, and then I can't really read the rest. Something probably has the patent date on there. Reg, it's got a couple patent dates on there. Made in USA, fountain pen. But yeah, this pen has been used a lot. And uh, on the back of the, uh, the pen, you see 52 stamped into it, which is the model of this pen. All right, let's look under the, let's look under the cap. So what we have here is... Uh, not a nib that came on this pen. Uh, this is a nib I put in this pen myself. This is a Schaefer's 33 14 karat gold stub nib that actually I, I got off one of my other Waterman pens, which came with this nib. Uh, the pen, the, the nib that came with this pen was a really terrible uh, ever sharp 14 karat gold nib that was pretty much ground down to nothing. So uh, I decided to slap this one in there and it writes really nicely. You have the spoon feed on the back right here. This is made out of the same material as the pen itself. So you can see how it kind of matches with the, uh, the design. And uh, the, way it the way you hold it, it feels very nice for me. It's not too big. This is like probably almost the perfect size. It just doesn't feel too big. It doesn't feel too small. It feels like a normal sized pen that you could actually write with. And uh, these threads are not sharp. These are very uh, nicely uh, out of the way. You can, you, I mean, you can feel them for sure. I mean, but they don't. They're not irrit irritable or uh, anything else. Definitely posts very nicely, and it turns into a very nice, again, usable pen. So I can try to demonstrate that to you right here. So let's do some measurements on this pen. Tape measure, and these are going to be rough estimates because I only I only have this this is to measure with, uh, the pen with. So as you can see, the cap length is about two and a quarter inches. I'm going to measure the 
pen itself. Let's see what we got here. Uh, from the top of the grip section to the back of the pen, looks like about uh, four and a half inches. From the top of the nib, we're looking at about five inches. Um, overall length of the pen is about five and a half inches. Posted. Uh, I'm going to do a measurement again from the grip section, about six inches, and then from the nib, that'll add about a half an inch right there. Uh, this will be interesting to film. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, barrel cap cap diameter uh, cap diameter is about uh, less than a little less than half an inch. Barrel is uh, I would say a little bit more than a little less than that too. So uh, I don't even know like whatever is between a half and a quarter. <laughs> something in there, a third. So that's that pen. Now, the other pen I have here, the same model as another, this is another 52. This is a different design. This is actually an earlier pen. Let me get this out of the way. And it has a different clip design. Let me zoom in so I can show this to you. There we go. So um, this clip is an earlier design like I showed you in the previous photo above. And uh, this one has clip cap on there with the ideal logo right there and then two more rivets. You can see this chasing in here, which is actually very crisp, very clean. This pen hasn't been used too much, but uh, I, I, I use it a lot. It's a, one of my favorite pens to write with. Again, you have this uh, lever right here. And then you can actually read the barrel imprint, which reads, um, I can have it focus. Give it one sec to focus. There we go. It says patented 1884. That's when Waterman patented his first pen. May 23rd, 1899. I don't know what patent that's for. Waterman's ideal fountain pen, New York, USA. And August 4th, 1903. And you can see the nice, uh, nice design. Now, uh, and you can also see 52 right there as well. Fiddle focus. All right, again, let's look under the uh, let's look under the, the cap. So here we have an actual original nib on here. This is a Waterman's Ideal number two. Now this is the nib that actually came with the pen, and it's a very very nice uh, flex nib on here. It says Waterman's Ideal New York number two, which is the nib size. And then again, you have that spoon feed right here. I'm not going to do, uh, I'm not going to videotape a writing sample of these pens. I will post pictures at the end of this video. I just cannot figure out a way to film uh, a writing sample uh, and make it look professional. I do the best I can with this. So, and then I'll zoom out again. This feels great. This feels excellent to hold. The measurements on this pen will be exactly the same as on the Red Ripple one. Uh, the material on this pen is made out of black hard rubber. And again, you can see it, 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 oh man, it feels so nice to hold. Again, these threads are not sharp. It posts very nicely, very securely, and then you just screw it back in. So these other two pens. So this one is an interesting pen. I got this pen uh, like a month or so ago. And you can see kind of a resemblance of this pen against the, uh, the Waterman 52 right here. Let me just put them side by side. Let me zoom in too. So this, this is a military pen, if I recall. Let's see if it, this will focus. Come on, focus. But uh, on the cap, it reads U.S. United Service, uh, 
the Middlesex Company, uh, Brooklyn Clip Fill, and it's got a logo of it looks like muskets and an anchor. I think those are muskets. Could be wrong. Uh, there's a crack in here, and this uh, this cap right here. I filled it in a little bit so it shouldn't keep splitting. Here's the filler. This filler is a matchstick filler or a clip fill, hence the name. What the idea is is uh, if I can find it, there it is. There's a pressure bar you can see right here, and what the idea is is you get this clip, which would uh, be removed from the cap, and you would actually push it in there and then fill the pen, press the ink sack down. That, or you could use a match. They uh, said you could use either one, or whatever else you can do to, that sticks in there and fills up the pen with ink. There's nothing else on the on the pen itself, and. Uh, very interesting. It's got this the, the same uh, chasing and uh, imprint, and it's even the same size as the Waterman. You can see pretty clear resemblance. So I'm I'm banking on saying that this is probably a Waterman pen body uh, on a different branded pen. Because I, what I did the research online about this pen was um, they said they use this for the military. They sent out these pens for, I think, World War II or even for training, uh, if I remember correctly. These were around, these were made around in the time of World War II, or World War I, actually. Let's look under the pen. So, here's a similar story right here. The most interesting part about this is the nib, though. Check this out. So, this nib is actually says 14 karat Alco. And then it has number 03, which I don't know what that means. I don't think it's the nib size because this is a number two size nib. However, Alco stands for Aiken Lambert. Uh, you know, the people, the guys that make the uh, dip pens, the gold dip pens that you see all the time. Uh, and then you have this really interesting feed. It's actually not lined up. Let's see if I can push that back. There we go. Uh, it's a very square feed. It's not a Waterman feed. I can show you what the Waterman feed looks like. So side by side, here we go. So you can see, um, wow, even the nib is smaller itself. Like visually, it looks a lot smaller too. So I don't know too much about this pen, but um, you can see the iridium on here. Whoops. Line up those nibs, those tines. There we go. It's not much iridium left on the nib, so I don't really write with this pen very much. It writes kind of on the drier side, but it definitely has a lot of flex, and it's a lot of fun to write with. But again, it's kind of the same story. Uh, it, it feels pretty much the same as the other two pens. Um, feels very nice to hold. Threads aren't sharp. And posting, it's not a problem. Posts very securely. Got to be careful of that crack in there so it doesn't keep splitting. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it for this pen. It feels very nice. Uh, again, the dimensions and the measurements of this pen are exactly the same. And one last note, this clip is not original to this pen. This is a this is, uh, clip actually came off of this pen, which is kind of a, I don't want to say a junker pen, but I mean, it's not a pen I use very often. So I just decided, hey, you know, let's just stick it on here because this is missing the actual clip. So. So, as such, it's a fun little pen. So, last one, let's look at the pen I was critiquing. I'm sorry. Hello. So, this pen, I don't know what this pen really is. I mean, I can see it being a Waterman. Again, you can zoom in. But, um, I mean, it looks like the same cap. And, uh, but you see the barrel is a little bit shorter, so, but I, I'd still. I still think it could be uh, off of a Waterman production line of some sort. All right, so this nib is not the original nib. This is a Conklin Toledo 14 karat gold nib, which I got off of uh, Conklin that was scrapped. So I got the nib and salvaged it off of this pen. Now, um, it's it's not pretty, but this was, I got this pen a long time ago when I first started getting into fountain pens. and. Accidentally broke a feed and super glued it back in, which is probably the worst thing I've ever done to a pen because uh, it's terrible. It still writes ish, but uh, it's 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 kind of a problematic pen. But I wanted to show this pen because uh, I'm showing all these Waterman pens, 
And I thought, uh, you know, the only thing that it says on here is someone's engraving of Arkansas. There's nothing else on the pen. You got a lever unmarked, nothing marked on the barrel. Uh, again, it feels like the other two pens. These threads, though, uh, are a little bit more noticeable. But again, they're not sharp. I just want to emphasize that. They don't feel sharp. But, I don't know. It's an interesting pen, if nothing else. And, um... Well, the measurements are a little bit less. I think the only thing that's different, let me just check, is the length of the barrel. Which in this case is about, looks like about four inches. Now the original nib that came on this pen was actually a really tiny uh, warranted 14 karat gold nib, which um, I still have, but it doesn't fit in this pen anymore. I mean, it's uh, like a number. I don't even know what number it is. It's just so small. So that's all I have for for this review. Here's the pens I reviewed. We got our 52 Red Ripple from around the late 1920s. We have a U.S. service pen from around probably before the 1920s, if not around the early 1920s. We have this pen. I have no idea when this was made. I'm going to give a range of 1915 to 1925 maybe and then we have uh, this last waterman pen which is probably around the early to mid 1920s so up next I'm going to be uh, showing you some pictures of writing samples I have of these pens and that should be about it so thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more reviews from me thank you